So what you're looking at right now is the bottom of the cylinder head. This is the this would be the top. And I removed it so you can kind of see the old gasket that's attached to the actual cylinder head. And I'm going to go ahead and remove it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this razor blade knife and just gently pull on it because when I put the new gasket down I don't want any of this old gasket on there of course I'm with this knife it would be great to have cut resistant gloves but I don't have any so I'm just making sure that I'm pushing this blade away from me and then what you'll see is small little pieces of the gasket that's, that are still on there. I just want to scrape that off and not scratch the actual aluminum. I want this surface good and clean when I go to put this cylinder head back on with the new gasket. Because if I leave any old gasket on there the new one won't seat well and you could have a leak which means you could have a, a loss of the coolant getting into your head and it could actually cause more damage um, so what we'll do next is uh, I'll just get some uh, maybe a, a nice cloth and just kind of wash that off but that's that's pretty pretty clean and then I'll go back to the uh, snowmobile, make sure all the gas is removed from there. So let me go ahead and show you what so I mean by that. Hold on one second. There's two cylinders, and if you look right there, there's some old gasket. And I'll get that razor blade knife. And make sure all this is cleaned off. Here's some old gasket right here, too. But where I had uh, rebuilt the top end last year, this gasket came off really easily. And usually if they're, well, the head's been on for a while, it's pretty hard to clean them off. But Well, before I put a new gasket on here, um, I think you can see something right away. You see this, uh, this is coolant. And if I put that new gasket on there, that coolant's going to soak it and it'll soften it up before I can tighten it down. So I wanted to share a, a little tip. Before you put that gasket on here, of course we want this gonna be clean and dry and this coolant's not gonna allow that. So I'm gonna show you how to just pull it out using a, a little syringe. And this may take a two, but I'm just gonna put it in there. And of course I got a out of camera view, a, a little tank. And as I pull this out, You'll start to see the level lower and I want to get this level low enough to where this coolant is not going to be a factor for the new gasket that I'm going to put on this okay so it just takes a few um, siphoning of the syringe to pull that level low enough and because this fluid goes through this whole system. Um, both sides will actually lower as you pull this out. And it's down about almost a half inch, which is probably more than enough. And then what I would do is just get you know a towel. You know, I use a disposable paper towel. And then just dry this coolant off this. That way, I have a nice dry surface for when I put on this new gasket. I'll dry off both sides here. All right, so what are we doing here? We're just spraying this thing down. Put some lubrication in there. Lubricate the pads and the cylinder. Okay. So what's this called, Jim? called honing. Why is it important? Well, it gives your cylinder a little roughened edge so that the rings can wear against it and actually seat. 
feed into the cylinder correctly. Okay. This is not boring. This is just toning. This is just smoothing up the inside of that cylinder. Spray a little bit more in there. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll just, spray. All right, just spray on the pads and down in there. There you go. see what we're doing here with it okay so how do you check it do you well, hit, just hit it with this wd-40 and no, you, you look down in there and see what you have a oh yeah i got a something. rag rag or something wipe that out where i can so i guess they're what spring activated yeah they're spring activated and you don't want to do this fast you do it slow gotcha The battery is going in and out type thing. You don't want to go around and around and around. Okay. Do you have to go all the way down and yeah, out? But you don't want to go through all the okay. way because then the springs will go like that. And that would be bad. That would be bad. Oh, I like that. That looks really good. I'm going to do a side by side comparison. Um, let's flip her upside down, Jim. Yeah. yeah. You see how slick that other one is, shiny that other one is, and this one is now dull. Gotcha. That's what you want. Perfect. I feel like I'm getting more compression as we talk. Tiny little ones like this. I don't know if we're going to be able to take those out or not. That side looks good. It looks really nice. See how that is cross hatched? Yes, sure do. And all the vertical lines are gone there. Well, maybe just a little bit more. If you take a look at this one, it's just straight up and down. huge difference so you kind of do a side by side honed not honed so there's a few little vertical scratches here and there but that's okay Jim I don't think that's gonna make a whole lot of difference okay I'm gonna go ahead and clean the carbon off this I'm just gonna use a fine grit sandpaper Before I reassemble the cylinder head, I just want to get this good and cleaned up. I have a little bit of WD-40 there to help lift all this off. Just about got it all off there. Now, as I Take a look at this other piston. You see the piston ring, how that fits on there. And I'll be replacing those with new the, rings. There's a real small notch, you can barely see it, but if the ring that is on there, it, it won't rotate. All right, so this cylinder does not have the ring on, and there's the notch. And again, there's the arrow, which indicates the front of the engine. So we won't go ahead and put that there. Yes, sir. All right, that's good for now. Now, the next thing I did is I cleaned this out and I got all the radiator coolant, I mean these holes, because when I put the bolts in, I don't want any of that fluid coming out and soaking my gasket. I want a good dry gasket, so. Now for this uh, skidoo, this is the part number for the gasket, 4209311186. And I purchased it on eBay. The cylinder base gasket, there's some more information. And I believe that's the company I got it from. So a little plug okay. for them. So the gasket uh has a, a one notch here and this is where the fluid will go through so it, it will set right down like that i 
just a little bit. I think I need to cut some of that off. I'll flip it over before you do that. Okay. Yep. Do need to cut a little of that out of there. All right. So we'll be right back and we'll cut that out and we'll show you how it fits after that. Okay, so we trimmed the gasket and we got that in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the cylinder head down on the cylinder. But what I have to do is compress the ring as I put the sleeve, the cylinder sleeve down on it. It was. It's in there now. It's okay. going to go down. Hold on one second. Let me tell you what, I got hold this. I want to just make sure that. So when I assembled at Toyota, they wanted you to hand turn it four times before you could put a tool on it to tight, tighten it out so you prevent cross threading with a torque gun. Well, which one of these holes has a screwdriver in it? Oh shoot, you have to look at the other tools. I don't have anything in there. Yeah, you know, 516. You need a flathead screwdriver? I was just going to tighten up that hose clamp while you remember that uh, I just saw it. Uh, what hose clamp are you talking about? Before I go ahead and torque the bolts down for the cylinder heads, I need to go ahead and place the exhaust manifold on. And the exhaust manifold has a couple gaskets, and they have to be placed in here and sometimes it's kind of challenging to hold the manifold and slide the bolts in here so I'm going to give you a tip that I learned a while back is I'm just going to use some dental floss to tie the gasket to the manifold and then after I slide the bolts in and start them up I'll just take a little razor blade knife and cut the dental floss out or if you don't want to do that, you can just leave it in. It should not cause a problem, but I don't like anything in there that's not supposed to. So I just make a little tie on that. And there we go. Put the strings out of the way. The gaskets are on the manifold. Now it's time to install. The reason you don't tighten the The head bolts down is because because they're two separate ones you got to get these lined up just right now the orientation of the manifold needs to be where this is higher not lower and like in this case or the muffler won't go on so i'm going to go ahead and line up
sequence and the proper torque. So I went ahead and printed this off the internet. And let me get the picture right. So this would be the front of the engine. So it actually, the orientation would be like this. But can't read it that way. Now, my torque wrench that I have is in inch pounds, and they want us to torque this down at 195 inch pounds, starting with this bolt, then this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, that one, that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this piece of paper in that orientation so it's easy for me to follow. I have a torque wrench and I already set it to uh, 195 inch pounds, which is probably really hard to see. And the socket size is, which I have a hard time seeing that, but I think it's a 12 millimeter. No, it's 11 millimeter. I'll need an extension. And let's go ahead and torque these down. So this is number one. 